In this video, we'll be talking about the movement of air. To understand how air moves around our Earth, we need to understand the differences in pressure that exist. Now, when we talk about air pressure, we are talking about the weight that the atmosphere is putting on the Earth's surface. Air pressure is affected by the temperature of the air, and wind is caused by differences in atmospheric pressure. We get two main types of pressure, high pressure and low pressure. High pressure cells are associated with cold, dense air that sinks, and low pressure cells are associated with warm, less dense air that rises. Winds move away from high pressure areas towards low pressure areas, and that is caused by something called pressure gradient force. Pressure gradient force is the horizontal difference in pressure on the Earth's surface. The greater the difference in pressure, the stronger the pressure gradient force is, and the stronger the wind will be. If we are looking on a weather map or on a synoptic chart, we can use our isobars, which are lines joining places of equal pressure, to help us determine what the pressure gradient force will be. If the isobars are closer together, we say that the pressure gradient force is steeper and therefore the wind is stronger. If the isobars are further apart, it means that the wind will be weaker. The next concept that plays a major role in the movement of air around our globe is Coriolis force. And Coriolis force is the deflection of wind that is caused by the rotation of the Earth. Coriolis force is strongest at the poles and weakest at the equator. In fact, there is actually no Coriolis force 5 degrees north and south of the equator. The stronger the wind is, the stronger the Coriolis force will be. Now winds deflect in different directions depending on what hemisphere we are in. In the southern hemisphere, winds deflect to the left, and in the northern hemisphere, winds deflect to the right. And this rule is known as Ferrell's Law. A third concept to keep in mind is something called geostrophic flow. Now geostrophic flow occurs when wind actually blows parallel to isobars. In other words, it is perpendicular to the pressure gradient force. Geostrophic flow occurs when pressure gradient force is equal to Coriolis force. Geostrophic flow only occurs in the upper atmosphere and over oceans where there is very, very little friction. So if we were to look at all three of these concepts on one combined diagram, it would look something like this. Pressure gradient force means that air moves from a high pressure to a low pressure across the isobars. Because of Earth's rotation, Coriolis force is going to cause the wind to be deflected. Now if we are looking in the southern hemisphere, this wind will be deflected to the left. If Coriolis force and pressure gradient force are balanced, we will then get geostrophic flow and the air will move parallel to the isobars. When looking at pressure cells in the different hemispheres, they also rotate in different directions. In the southern hemisphere, low pressure systems will rotate in a clockwise direction and high pressure systems will rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. In the northern hemisphere, low pressure systems will rotate in an anti-clockwise direction and high pressure systems will rotate in a clockwise direction. This is because of the deflection that is happening in these different hemispheres. Remember, Ferrell's law states that deflection is left in the southern hemisphere and right in the northern hemisphere. There is another law that goes along with this concept called Bayes Ballot's law. This law states that if you are standing with your back to a geostrophic wind in the southern hemisphere, the high pressure will be on your left hand side and the low pressure will be on your right. And that is it for the movement of air. These concepts in this video serve as a crucial foundation going forward. So it is important that you understand all of these concepts and all of these laws. Hope it was helpful and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.